Okay, hey, um, so this is John. Um, this is the game engine I've been working on for about a year and a half. I just want to start devlogging it. It'd be nice to be able to look back on these after a certain amount of time. Um, so a, a lot's happened in a year and a half. You know, I had to set up all the rendering engines from scratch, um, all the physics, math, APIs. Um, I really wanted to, to learn it all from scratch, so I did it that way. Um, so it's been a long process, but it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. Um, it's really made me a better coder. And eventually, I'd like to turn this into a game. Um, I'm thinking uh, isometric, um, ARPG, roguelike type of thing. You know, where you have different character classes. Um, pick up loot, multiplayer maybe. Um, randomized dungeons. That, that sort of nature. So... Hopefully I can um, keep up with this and then devlog this process and then, you know, have something really cool at the end to show for it. Um, so right now what I do have working is a full entity component system. Um, everything that is drawn on the screen right now except for this light hanging around me or my character and also the background. Um, every single bit of these are entities. Um, the reason I did it that way, like for all this debris and everything around here, was so that I could have really fast collisions um, and I could archetype certain things really quickly by, you know, adding and removing components um, during runtime and also um, when making these entities um, from data. But yeah, so collision system is working. Um, it's really simple. It uses um, just Cartesian AABB structs, so just really simple collision structs that I have defined in the physics library. So everything's isometric here, so that means that all of the grid system is basically a diamond shape, but what you do is you transform all this into Cartesian and then you do the collisions there, which makes it a lot easier. And so these ground tiles basically when they collide the entities collide um, I do sorting based on that as well so you can see when I step behind this guy um, I go behind him and when I step in front of him I go in front of him so it makes it really convenient um, yeah and so I can attack him and you see that that's working as well um, I also have a working particle engine um, it's very loose right now basically has one update function which is just it loses the particle loses alpha over time eventually I want to set up a particle editor so that that becomes pretty robust um, but you can kind of see there the the blood particles kind of going out and also whenever I do the the weird little dash move that I have prototyped um, keep in mind everything's really rough and a lot of this is just testing out concepts um, but yeah colliding with these is a uh, uh, pretty neat and pretty easy. Um, yeah. Um, so also uh, dynamic lighting is a thing that I've been working on. So the lighting system originally was going to use. I was looking at normal maps for 2D sprites. Um, still might do that. Right now it basically just uses um, the radius of the light. So it takes the center of the light and um, using deferred rendering, so I render everything out to diffuse, position, um, depth, textures, uh, and then bring that in to the deferred shader, and then I use the, the light calculations on that, um, piece everything together, and then you get the final composite image, which is what you see here. You can turn that on, on and off, basically. So this is all the diffuse textures, um, and then with the lighting you get this. Um, which I think, I think looks pretty cool. You know, so I don't, I don't know, maybe I will go with the normal maps, or maybe I'll just keep it like this. Depends on the style of the game that I want to go for. Um, so talking about the entity component systems again, and how everything is set up on a grid system. This is uh, my spatial grid. So basically what you do is you define um, a level size. It takes that, hashes everything up, into these uniform cells and then all the entities whenever they collide with these cells they every frame register themselves with a cell and so you see anything that has an entity in it um, or any cell that has an entity in it that gets labeled as white 
and anything that's empty is a blue cell here, right? Um, well, that's useful for a lot of things. Obviously, for collisions, um, it cuts down on collision checks. That way, you know, the, this entity over here won't ever check with a collision in a frame with this guy because they're way too far away. They just look at, you know, is he in the same cell as I am? If he is, then I'll do a collision check. You'll also notice that certain entities. I'll we'll turn the light off so it might be a little easier to see. But this guy right here, there's a possibility of him being in four cells at one time, um, which is, you know, obviously makes it to where, um, you know, there's no chance of, you know, maybe not colliding with something when he should. Um, this is also used for AI in pathfinding. Um, so I use A star pathfinding for my AI. Um, and basically what that does is it finds the shortest path from one starting place to an ending starting place. Um, and the way I use this grid is that each grid has what's called an obstruction value in it. And it's normalized from 0 to 1. Uh, 0 being completely unobstructed, 1 being completely obstructed. Um, and so I'll draw a little bit here. When it's completely unobstructed, um, there's no green tint to them, and this is just a, a debug rendering. Um, when it's completely obstructed, there is some, uh, there is green, completely green. So if I draw out a small little area in here, mark it off a bit, um, and then turn on some AI, you'll see a black path be drawn, and that's going to be the path that's calculated in that frame that the AI will take to get to my character. And you can see they're completely avoiding um, the green squares as they should. Turn that off. I can move somewhere else and then turn it back on and they'll recalculate again. So that took a bit to get set up but I'm actually pretty happy with that. They do get hung up on corners sometimes so what I've noticed I've had to do is um, on corners, I've had to paint um, completely obstructed corners. I've noticed that if I just do the corners that way, then they don't get hung up. Um, it's kind of a hacky workaround. I'm not sure if I like it, but whatever, it works for now. So I'm just going to keep it that way. Um, let's see, another thing that I want to log is, um, well, this the animation editor. Um, so I want to have editors for pretty much all of my systems, uh, my behavior tree systems, uh, which is what I use for the AI. Um, I also want to have one for level editing. Now everything's going to be procedurally generated, so I won't be designing levels by hand, but what I will be designing is the chunks for those levels that the engine will put together procedurally. So I will want an editor for that, you know, kind of like a tile editor. Um, and then animations, obviously. Um, so this is the first one that I came up with. That's because what I was doing originally was editing all of these values here, like delays between frames, um, these offsets. Whenever um, you know, I, I load everything in from sprite sheets, and whenever I load them in, sometimes the offsets are completely out of whack. You know, kind of like this. So I play this animation, you see it kind of jumping around like that. Um, so what I was having to do was step through these by hand and edit their values. Um, of course, that's inefficient and stupid, so um, eventually moved to this, to where I could just bring it in and then drag these here and change the values automatically, and then I save it back out to file. Um, so when I load it back the next time, then it's good to go. You know, And I want to do that for everything. I want to have an architect's archetyped system, um, kind of like a prefab system like Unity uses for entities, so you save metadata on the entities. Um, and also again for levels, particles, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then I guess the last thing that I worked on just today is kind of like a quick little thing is this, so doing splines. This uses a short line approximation um, to calculate angles between individual lines and then um, really simple uh, cubic interpolation between points. So basically I just created a function for myself where I just pass in a certain uh, start and end point, some control points, and then um, a number of points and a thickness 
for the line. And you can see it fluctuating. I'm just kind of animating it over time just to see what that looks like. And also the end point is the mouse cursor here. So it, for the most part, it looks pretty good no matter where I go. There is some funkiness right there. If I try to wrap um, the, I think that's the B control point, this one right here. If I try to wrap that too much, it does start to break a little bit. That's also a part of it being way too thick. I notice that doesn't happen if the line is super thin. So, I don't know. Uh, basically what I want to use these for is you see games like um, Into the Gungeon. Um, that's the first one coming to mind right now, but they have the the Ghostbusters laser, right? It's kind of goofy, kind of, kind of funky, kind of fun, but the the cool thing about that is kind of like a chain lightning thing you know you you have you set points between various targets various entities basically and then you shoot that and then the spline um, smoothly interpolates between those points and it's really cool looking having something like that would be cool in game um, also just a, a simple application for my editor you know I was talking about the behavior tree editor being able to use that to um, use to show connection connections between nodes like between a parent and its children um, to show what actions are affecting what would be really useful as well I th think that's it so I don't expect anyone to really watch these these are more for my benefit if anyone likes them that's cool um, leave a comment if you want but I hope to keep up with it and see where this goes alright